Hello everyone. In this lecture today, we are going to look at link layer addressing and ARP, which is the address resolution protocol. We've already studied about the IP addressing or the 32-bit IP address, which is primarily used in the network layer. In the link layer, we are going to have another ad address, which is called the MAC, MAC address. The MAC address is 42-bit long and is written in hexadecimal. So the diff main difference, between, one of the main differences between the MAC address and the IP address is that the MAC address is 30, 48 bits in, in length, while the IP address is only 32 bits in length. Now, secondly, the MAC address is used in the link layer, while the IP address is used in the network layer. So first, <coughs> let's look at how, how, how the LAN addresses are, are assigned. So each adapter on the LAN has a unique address. Now, MAC addresses are allocated by IEEE. So whenever a manufa each manufacturer of an adapter buys a portion of MAC addresses from IEEE, and then these are, uh, and each, de uh, each device is provided a MAC address. So MAC address is kind of hard-coded. You could think of it as each device comes with a registered MAC address. So the, to have an analogy of why we knew, why we need to address this, Think of you could you should think of MAC addresses as social security numbers, while IP addresses are like postal addresses. MAC addresses do not change; they are every device has a, the same MAC address, while IP addresses can change. IP uh, are like postal addresses. So if you move from one house to another house, your postal address changes. Similarly, IP address can also change if you move from one network to the other. So as MAC addresses are, <clears throat> are hard-coded and so they are portable, so one, once you move from one mm, network to the other, your MAC address does not change, your MAC address remains the same. same. On the other hand, if you move across uh, one network to the other, what's going to happen is that IP address will change. It will depend on the subnet and <clears throat> it's going to change as you move, when you move from one network to the other. So next question is, how do you obtain an uh, obtain a MAC address? So if you know a network or uh, a dim, sorry a host IP address or an interface IP address, how do you determine its MAC address? The answer is you use the address resolution protocol and the ARP table to determine uh, the MAC address from the IP address. So it, um, what the ARP table has is it has a bunch of entries and each entry is a mapping between an IP address and a MAC address, and there's also a TTL, which is the time to live. So what, <clears throat> what this means is this IP address maps to this particular MAC address for this time to live. After this time has, uh, has elapsed, this entry is going to be thrown away from the ARP table. You could find some similarities between the ARP, the way the ARP table is constructed with the NAT table. So it's a mapping between the IP address and the MAC address. So once you have the ARP table, the ARP protocol helps a host determine the MAC address of another host. So let's assume that, <clears throat> let's see how the ARP protocol works. The ARP protocol works within the same LAN because you want to send an, uh, you want to send um, a, from a datagram from one node to the other. And if it's within the same LAN, you will need to use MAC addresses. So let's assume that A wants to send a datagram to B. Now B's MAC address is not in the ARP table or A's ARP table. If B's MAC address, if you assume that is present in A's ARP table, what's going to what A is going to do is look up the MAC address of B and send the datagram to B. But if it, <clears throat> if B's MAC address is not available to A, what A is going to do is A is going to <clears throat> broadcast an ARP query asking asking who has this particular IP address. In the destination MAC address, it's going to put FFFF, so it's going to put all Fs or basically all ones, and it broadcasts this query. B, when um, as the query is broadcast on the LAN, when B receives this query, it's going it's going to send a response message saying that it has the particular IP address and it sends the MAC its MAC address to A. A can now use this MAC address that B has sent to so send the datagram to to B. A, what, have, what A does is that it then caches this IP to MAC mapping in his ARP table. It also puts a 
time to live such that our, <clears throat> says that it, this entry is only valid for a given length of time and after the time elapsed says this entry is automatically dropped from the table now ARP is a plug and play protocol nodes create ARP tables dynamically and so when you join a, on a LAN and you want to send a, a data packet to, to some other node connector on the same LAN this ARP, ARP protocol runs seamlessly and it provides you the MAC address. Now let's consider how routing takes place from one LAN to the other. So, so far we just looked at how routing takes place, how to forward datagrams within a, a LAN and how we can use ARP for that. Now to route a datagram from one LAN to the other, say A wants to send a data packet to B. The first thing that A has to know, it has to know B's IP address. So we assume that A knows B's IP address because if A does not know what B's IP address is, there's no way that A can send a datagram to B. The next is we can also assume that A knows the IP address of the first hop R. And how is it possible? Recall that DHCP returns the address of the first hop router, or the IP address of the first hop router, and hence A can know the, the IP address of the first hop router. Next, we also assume that A knows R's MAC address. And and if you think <coughs> if you think hard, you will know the answer how this is possible. We just discussed this. It is it is A can knows R's MAC address with the help of its uh, with the help of the ARP protocol. Like it can broadcast an ARP request asking you know, who has this particular IP <coughs> address, and then it would get a response back from R saying that this is uh, this is its MAC address. So in this way, A can know both the both the IP address and the MAC address of R. Now, once, uh, <coughs> once A knows B's IP address, R's IP address and R's MAC address, well, how does A then send a datagram to B? First, what it does is it creates a, a datagram, it puts the source IP address, which is A's IP address, then it puts a B's IP, IP address, which is the destination IP address, then it, and this is a datagram, it then passes through the, the link layer where the MAC address uh, or the MAC, I'm sorry, the MAC source and the MAC destinations are put. Note that the MAC source is the source address of A, which is 77, 74, 29, 9C, E8, FF55. The MAC destination is not the MAC destination of B. It is not. The MAC destination is actually the MAC destination of R, which is E6, E9, 0017BB4B. Therefore, because A and R, uh, so this interface of R and A are in the same network, and the first, the datagram has to go from A to this interface of R. This is, uh, this is forwarding within the same network. This is something that's happening in the link layer. That is why the MAC destination is the is the MAC address of this interface of R. So then A basically <coughs> sends this, uh, um, this this link layer frame. What happens it traverses uh, this, the network, the internal network, and arrives at, at, at R. Next, this, uh, this datagram is now going to be transferred from the input interface of R to the output interface. So basically, it's going to go from the, the interface that is labeled 111.111.111.110 to the one that is that has all twos in it and zero at the end. So it's going to go from this interface to this interface. <laughs> Next, now, once again, it has the, the, <coughs> the router now is now trying to send the packet on behalf of A to B. So it's now going to go through the IP address is basically the IP source is the source address of A and the destination is the destination address of B. And now when it goes to a link layer, what happens it adds the MAC source and the MAC destination. Note that the MAC source is the, is the MAC address of this interface of R. So it's 182379CD069B. So you could follow my mouse and you will know that the MAC address is this particular address out here. The des MAC destination address is the des MAC address of B. So that is the destination address that uh, that is the destination address corresponding to B. So next, R basically sends this datagram, which goes through the network, and it's going to, and comes 
to be. It once again passes the layers at when the different MAC headers are removed, the IP address, uh, IP headers are removed and the datagram is delivered to be. So this is how addressing takes place within a lab. With this, I'm going to end this uh, lecture, this lecture.